the slow up No, I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up Welcome back friends, I'm Rogue and in today's Lord of the Rings Online Beginner Guide we are going to be taking a look at the Hunter. The Hunter is a ranged combatant capable of dealing amazing damage from afar. Armed with a bow and an assassin's attitude, the Hunter is the stone cold killer of Middle Earth. But before we dive in, I want to say thank you to all the new and returning subscribers, you guys are amazing. Okay, so before we can start dropping the shadow like third period French, we need a hero. All races are applicable to become a hunter, barring the Bjorning who can only be the biggest of bears. Sorry, big fella. Hey, don't stop now, Baggy, you're doing great. Now, due to time constraints, I will be using Chad Jack, my level 33 hunter, to showcase the combat abilities of the hunter class. During the recordings, I only used abilities and skills up to level 20, including class traits. Normally, I would re-level a hunter to showcase the low-level experience, but as you guys know, sometimes real life has a way of hogging up all your fun time. I hope you guys can find it in your heart to forgive me. Now, before we dive too deep into the hunter, let's talk about the hunter class for just a second. In my opinion, the Hunter is one of the best beginner-friendly classes of Lotro. As a ranged damage dealer, you have the luxury of avoiding melee combat altogether in group contact. You can hang back and melt health bars without really having to break a sweat. If you are new to Lotro and looking to dish out massive damage without a whole lot of effort, this is a great starter class to get into the game. Okay, let's get after it. The Hunter has a combat mechanic called Focus. This bar crests the top of your auto attack icon and it's used to fuel some of the Hunter's more deadly attacks. But don't worry, it's an easy to manage mechanic. The Hunter's combat skills can be broken into two types, Focus Builders and Focus Attacks. As I said, it's pretty easy to manage. Okay, let's see what the starting Hunter receives. The Hunter begins play with four skills. Quick Shot is your starting spammable attack and deals low damage at a 30 meter range, adding one focus to your Hunter and has no cooldown, but it does have a .5 induction or casting time. This skill will be your most used attack while leveling, and as you gain levels has the potential to end fights very quickly. Blindside is another 30 meter range attack that deals moderate damage and interrupts enemy inductions, grants 3 focus to your hunter and rests on an 18 second cooldown. The primary use of this skill is to put a stop to those evil wizards from setting you on fire or whatever hoodoo they are trying to cast. Barbed Arrow is another 30 meter range induction skill with a casting time of 1.5 seconds. It deals moderate damage and places a bleed on your target that deals damage every 2 seconds for 12 seconds and reduces their movement speed by 10% for 20 seconds. Adds 1 focus and sits on a 1.5 second cooldown. This is a great fight starter skill at low level. Not only does it place a bleed on the target, but also slows them down allowing you to send more arrows their way before they can get close. And finally, Penetrating Shot. This 30 meter range attack deals good damage at the cost of 3 focus and lowers the target's physical and tactical mitigation or their defenses for 10 seconds on a 3 second cooldown. This is a great kill shot skill and sometimes ends fights before they ever start. Due to the recent changes of Lotro, you can now select a class specialization at second level. The most beginner friendly, in my humble opinion, is the blue line. This allows you to move while using your archery skills and that perk in itself makes us a favorite amongst the hunters. For selecting the blue line, you gain two new skills. Scourging Blow is a dual strike melee attack that deals both your main and offhand damage to a single target and adds two focus to your hunter and sits on a 5 second cooldown. It is worth mentioning that this skill does deal additional damage if the target is suffering from the effects of Barbed Arrow, but does end the bleed effect once used. It's a nice follow up skill if the enemy manages to make it that close to you. And Barrage, another 30 meter range focus attack that deals increased damage if used consecutively, but costs more power with each use, at the cost of 3 focus and rests on a 2 second cooldown. This skill is good for a quick burst of damage against a tougher enemy. The mobility of the blue line hunter offers great combat speed while questing over land and keeping your hunter at a safe distance while running group content. Okay, let's dive into what the hunter receives as you gain levels. At third level you gain set trap. This 1 second induction skill places a snare in front of the hunter that deals common damage and roots the target for 30 seconds, but it does have a 50% chance to break upon dealing additional damage to the target, and a 45 second cooldown. This skill is nice for small group pulling, and it's a nice addition to the hunter's combat suite, but it's definitely not the greatest tool in your arsenal. 
Upon reaching fourth level, the hunter gains their first stance. Stances add additional bonuses to your combat abilities depending on the stance. Stances can be toggled by right clicking them and stay active until removed or you decide to switch stances. At fourth level, you receive strength stance, which alters your quick shot ability, granting a bonus to your critical rating, archery induction skill damage output, and focus attack damage and rests on a five second cooldown. There is no reason to ever be in combat without a stance active, so be sure to always have one toggled. By 6th level, you will have placed your 5th point into the blue line, granting the passive ability Knock on the Move, which reduces the movement penalty of your induction skills by 20%, allowing you to fight on the move that much faster. At 8th level, the Hunter gains the Focus skill, a channeled skill that lasts for 3 seconds and adds 1 focus point every 0.3 seconds, but ends early if you move and sits on a 2 second cooldown. This skill is a great way to keep your focus maxed in between fights, allowing you to lead with your strongest attacks when engaging the enemy. At 9th level, if you're still following the blue line, you gain access to the split shot skill. This induction skill has a casting time of 1 second and launches multiple arrows at once, hitting up to 7 targets when the skill is maxed out, at the cost of 2 focus and sits on a 10 second cooldown. This is your best option for small group pulling at low level and is great for thinning the herd when engaging multiple enemies. Upon reaching level 10, you gain Swift Bow. This induction skill has a casting time of 1.7 seconds and launches two arrows at a single target for good damage and adds two focus to your hunter and sits on a 10 second cooldown. This is an excellent fight starter against stronger enemies if Blindside happens to be on cooldown. Okay, let's talk about a rotation for just a moment. The Hunter class deals amazing damage with most of its skills. Being able to do this while on the move is just insult to injury. But there are a few things to keep in mind while you are sending bad guys to the afterlife one arrow at a time. First is to always try to maintain focus. It's easy to forget to use your focus skill after every fight to keep your strongest mechanics topped off. That being said, there really isn't a wrong way to win ranged fights with the hunter, and you will discover that you can end most fights with weaker enemies in 1-2 to two arrows, so let's consider a boss enemy for our target for the hunter rotation. Manage your focus. Try to keep your focus maxed before every engagement. This offers the option to rip off your strongest attacks whenever you need to deal strong burst damage. Bleed. I like to kick off a boss fight with Barbed Arrow that's 12 seconds of damage and minus 10% movement speed to the target, allowing you to keep your enemy at a distance. This skill only has a 1.5 second cooldown, so reapply as needed. Penetrating Shot lowers the target's physical and tactical mitigation. Now, it's not by a drastic amount, but 4% is better than no percent, and this skill still deals good damage. And Blindsight. This is your heaviest hitter on an 18 second cooldown and will immediately replenish the 3 focus cost of Penetrating Shot. And finally, Sprinkling Quick Shot and Swift Bow as needed. Now, this is a bit of an overkill rotation for the 10th level hero, and I'm going to be honest here, no overland enemy is surviving to see the end of this rotation, but it's always nice to have a plan. It's around this level that I recommend you start to pursue Slayer Deeds to snag up your first virtue. As for what virtue to select, Determination should be your first virtue due to agility being the primary stat for the Hunter Hero. It also increases Physical Mastery Rating, Critical Rating, and a passive to both your Physical and Tactical Masteries. In my opinion, this is the best in slot virtue for the Hunter class. Anything beyond this is up to you. At 12th level, you gain access to Find the Path, a toggled movement skill that increases your out-of-combat run speed. There's no reason to not have this skill active at all times. At 14th level, you gain Purge Poison, which removes up to 2 diseases, wounds, fear, or poison effects, and increases your poison resistance rating for 15 seconds on a 5 second cooldown. Use this to purge those pesky STDs the shadow is always trying to spread around. Upon reaching 16th level, you gain access to another stance. Precision is a toggled ability and it increases your critical chance for quick shot and generates one focus every 5 seconds. This is a good stance option if you are deed grinding due to the passive focus gains. And hey, increase crit to your primary spammable attack, that's nice as well. Low Cut is an 18th level melee skill that delivers both a main and offhand attack that deals decent damage and slows your target's movement speed by 50% for 10 seconds and grants 3 focus to your hunter. As with most of your melee skills, this skill only really comes into play if the enemy can make it to you, or you're just bored of sniping the pants off of everything. And finally, at 20th level you gain 3 new skills. Cry of the Hunter is a close range stun that has a 100% break chance if you damage the target, but can hit up to 6 enemies in a 6 meter radius and slows the targets by 50% for 10 seconds. And that's all well and good. 
But the real reason this skill is good is it provides a damage shield of temporary hit points that lasts for 30 seconds and prevents your induction skills from being set back. This is a low level hunter's oh shit button in a nutshell. Stun up to 6 targets, slow them by 50% for 10 seconds, and gain temporary hit points. But it does have a lengthy cooldown of 1 minute, so I'd keep this skill in reserve for when you absolutely need it. Desperate Flight is an escape power that returns your hunter to the nearest rally point on a 30 minute cooldown. I've never had to use this skill, but I suppose it's nice to have an abandoned ship button. And Blood Arrow, a single target attack that deals good damage and removes a corruption effect from your target and restores 10% of your hunter's maximum morale at the cost of 3 focus and sits on a 25 second cooldown. Okay, let's touch on a beginner friendly build to keep your hunter in the fight and keep your questing smooth. I began with 5 points and a strong draw. This adds up to 25% damage bonus to your focus consuming skills and in my opinion is a better choice than just 5% overall damage provided by impact arrows. With 5 points spent, we unlock the knock on the move passive, which grants plus 20% induction movement speed. Basically you can use your induction skills faster while on the move. From here I placed 4 points into split shot. Not only does this unlock the split shot skill, which we already went over, but it can hit up to 7 targets with 4 points spent. Then, I went back to strong draw and placed my 6 point. This grants a 15% chance to reduce the focus cost of all skills by 1 and although 15% chance isn't much, it does help with focus management a little. By placing our 10th point, we now unlock the passive fleetness, which has a 10% chance to increase our run speed by 10% any time damage is dealt to an enemy for 20 seconds. As a blue line hunter, your mobility is your strongest asset, and any buff that keeps the enemy at bay is a win in my book. From here, I took 5 points into Pathfinder for out of combat movement speed. This is solely due to the fact that I like being fast when doing overland questing. With 15 points spent, we now have access to the Barbed Hindrance passive, which increases the damage of our Barbed Arrow skill by 30%, all the more reason for Barbed Arrow to remain as our fight starter move. From here, I took 2 points into Blood Arrow, which adds a heal over time to our Blood Arrow attack, now restoring 10% of our maximum morale over time. It's a nice passive heal and should follow your Barbed Arrow when facing down a boss enemy. With my remaining 2 points, I selected Exsanguinate, which is a reactionary skill that with 2 points spent has a 66% chance to proc whenever you use the Blood Arrow skill. It deals good initial damage and bleeds the target dealing light damage every 2 seconds for 20 seconds. For me, the Hunter is the assassin of Lotro, a very easy class to get invested in with amazing range damage, mobility, and survivability, the Hunter is a fantastic class to explore Middle Earth with. If you're new to Lotro and you're looking to send the bad guys packing with ease, and maybe you're a fan of ranged DPS, you cannot go wrong with the Hunter. Well my friends, if you made it this far, thank you so much for your time and I hope you're enjoying your adventures in Middle Earth. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like to snipe the algorithm and consider subscribing for more RPG stuff. And as always, have a wonderful day guys. Goodbye.